welcome to a new week. Very uh, snow filled still, but the temperature is rising, so we're not quite out what we're gonna get done today. I'm glad we covered the uh, brickwork up on Friday though with the Hessian. Timber work is done over that window where we're gonna be leading it to uh, waterproof the saw piping. So we'll get the plywood on today, that's a definite. What else we're gonna get done today, I don't know. I'll wait until uh, Adam comes and see where we're gonna go with the brickwork. And we'll see what footage we get. Good morning, another day at Harborn. A lot different to yesterday morning. It's gone from what was one degree, two degrees yesterday morning and snow filled to 10 degrees and not a bit of snow in sight. It, uh, we got about 11 o'clock, half 11, we started this block like yesterday because we knew the temperature was going up and it did. It went up to about six degrees, I believe, by about six o'clock last night. We had a bit of rain in the night, I think, as well, which uh, curbed the temperature a little bit. So that block works done, thank goodness. So it means now today we can start all the, uh, all the joists and get this roof on. This is all good to go. It was all covered overnight, the Hessian. The delivery. More concrete box. More timber. Get round the back. We'll crack on. Side, I think, working our, ourselves towards the door. Shortest length from outside block to outside block this side. Cut all the eight by twos down. Nogging them out as we go, so we get them nice and parallel. So it makes it easy when we start uh, doing everything above. Is this is a, a warm deck, so we haven't got to worry about getting all the insulation inside the joists to make sure they're all nice and parallel, which we would do anyway. But uh, it makes it easier when you're doing the warm deck. A bit of hospital corners going on. Same again. And then we've got the four inch span of the block work, nice and dry. I've just cut my noggins, made myself a pattern, so I just put pat on it. Same as I do if you've watched the video before with the uh, the rafter, you always use the same pattern. So I've cut this at 355, which 45 mil timber then gives us our centre of 400. So I'll just use this now, just to pattern cut all of these. All I'm doing now is, because we've got a, a lantern opening of two metres by one metre, so we don't, uh, so we utilise as much timber as we can without wastage we've already got these as wastage but unfortunately they're 25 mil short for noggins which is a shame this is a 4.8 meter length of uh, 8 by 2 
set out my two meters, two meter, then gives me 800 off cut, minus two thickness to saw cut, obviously. And that's good enough then for two noggins. So that's how we're gonna try and keep yourself efficient with your timber. This uh, first six on the roof. If you look, if you can see there, we've marked that's where our first triple is going for the window opening to carry the what will be the the double to go across across there, which then starts to form the two meter of our one meter opening. But we'll show you more in a minute so that you understand that one a bit better. So what we're going to do now, because we we normally put perimeter noggins in just to stop them moving. These are going to be blocked in with brickwork because there's a parapet wall above there. So all I'm going to do now, put a row of noggins in the centre to get our equal spacings. And then in the, uh, in the intermediate, what we're going to put is stra a strapper on now and one side on the underside just to hold these timbers in the correct 400 centre and also have to stop them moving when we start putting the plywood on. <laughs> doing now make up the triple beams to going down either side of the um, two meter by one meter lantern so it'll go from wall plate to wall plate or in this instance block work to block work so all we're going to do first we make sure that any crowns in your timber are all the right way but this this timber's that good we ain't going to worry about it um, so all we've done we put up lined them all up on the end we then line them up on this face like that so they're all perfectly flat so they all sit and they all have proper bearing on the on the block work and then all we'll do then is we'll just get the uh, the nailer because they will be bolted. We'll get the nailer for now and just put a couple of nails in. So we'll just make sure that's flat again. The top matters as well, but as long as the bottom's got its proper bearing, the top then will be built in, so we're not going to have to worry about that one. Plus the fact we'll have furring strips on top as well. Just going to put another pin, couple of pins in that. So we'll check the, uh, the centre. Yep, happy with that. Put a couple of pins in the centre. And all we'll do now is we'll flip this over. Now we're happy. And we'll go from the other side because these are only 90 mil nails. So we just need to go from both sides now. We'll pop on in first before we flip it. But yeah, good point. That was a good point. We could actually do it from underneath. So when we flip it over, it doesn't actually come up right. which, which is a good idea. Same the other side.
Jerry's. Centralising now, I've got this triple in place. I've just cut three noggins now to go in here to keep this parallel. Centralising this in my block work now, block work to block work, which is centre line here. And because it's going to be a metre wide, just come across here now, 500. That's my centre line. You see we've been putting noggins in the centre, which we've done now, staggered centre, so you can get put better fixings in. That's why we stagger them. Got my centre, I'll put another noggin in the centre now, in here, to brace this all the way through. And then these ones now, I'll put another noggin, another two noggins now, at the point where I'm going to put my double timbers that come off here to go down either side of the window. So that'll brace it even further, all the way through. I'm feeling high. We've all pre-cut these when we're doing our noggins. Put this in place, put this on our line. I'll put a couple of pins in this now, cut the nails, but I won't get, pin it all the way home. This will be joist hanged at, at some point, just to make sure we're square. If we put loads of nails in, we can't adjust it, so just pin it for now. Do the same this side. Put a bit of weight on that beam against the plate. Right there on top of the moon, we could sit and do nothing. I wish we were both to just fly away. I don't want to care. Okay, all we need to know is to make sure this whole square, because ultimately we're going to put on top a lantern which looks more likely going to be square. And we need to make sure that when we put the reveals on the plasterboard, you can't see any discrepancy in the light. If it's out of square, it shows up and light looks terrible. So you can use measuring from, from that corner to that corner and that corner to that corner. And if the diagonal is exactly the same, then you know it's square. Or you can use a three, four, five. So a three, four, five method first. I'm going to use three foot, four foot, five foot, because I've got an open up enough, big enough. But you could use 300, 400, 500, whatever you want to use. So three foot, I'll put that on there first. So three foot. And then, can I go over here? Do you want to, uh, if you got your pencil, Mick, put a, mark me a four foot on there, please. And what you do then is, is you measure five foot between your two marks. So we've checked the uh, diagonals now, and that's exact, bang on square now, and we've still got parallel across that front. So ultimately, when you look up now, you can still see it's nice and square and parallel to the bifolds. Lovely. Are you on me? Yeah. Yeah. 
Good morning. Brought me back for uh, another day here on the job, Wednesday. So you'd have seen from the previous footage, we got most of this in last night. We got these uh, these two already cut, but we've got to fix the timber on the wall there first before we put these in there. So we won't have enough space because as you can see from there, they're quite, uh, quite close together. So I'll get the one cut on the wall first and then we can set these. I've got all the noggins cut. I've got all of these rafters cut, these small rafters that will all be joist hung off that double. We've got the um, turbo coach screws for fixing the, the doubles. The hundreds haven't come in yet for the triple, so we'll sort that out. We've set a bit of a gazebo up today because it's meant to rain. Mick's uh, already cracking on with the covering the ends of those little rafters for me. Uh, Brandon's in there, I think, doing the most important job of the day, making a brew. I'll stick it on a time lapse and I may stop and start it when we uh, start bolting the timbers to the wall or put the jiffy hangers on. What I have got to do today is make the fern strips. We couldn't get any from our supplier, so I'll, uh, I'll do, we'll do a separate video. I'll stick it in a time lapse when I'm doing it, but I'll do it in a separate video of how to make them yourself. But it basically means measuring from block work to block work for the length because it's inside a parapet wall and then you were uh, i think it's a one in 80 ratio i believe if i'm right i shall check that anyway i'm pretty sure it is and you cut the fern strips yourself and i'll do that now to mark them out I'm just going to do the uh, the timber on the wall there and then we can get these remaining two rafters in because at the minute if we didn't that would be in the way they wouldn't be able to stand there that gap it wouldn't be there so they're just doing that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set myself up with a big saw I'm now going to cut myself some fern strips I've done a measurement from there to there that block work block work to block work and it's 2045 and I'm going to cut the four which I've got down there first to 2045. Without it raining on me. My poor saws are a bit wet. We've got all the all the strips cut. I'll have to explain this tomorrow when it's a bit drier, hopefully. But we've cut loads of strips now at different thicknesses, along with the fern strips. We'll have a four this way, coming this way, towards the house, because the outlet's up there, and then also falling this way. Run out of time today. I said run out of time. We've run out of weather. We're all soaked to the pants, so it's uh, time to go now. We'll see you in the morning. Like
we worked out to make sure we've still got one in 80 in, the, in, in this direction as well, going towards the outlets in that corner, which I've already explained. So it's starting from 65 mil packer on top of the 8x2 joist here. And then it diminishes by five mil because we've got exact 400 centers. The only times it changes and you can't work on that five mil, five mil um, decrease is when the joists are close together. So all we've done is we've run the six foot level across and it actually works out the same as this one, which is 40 mil. It's actually 39 when you measure down. So you put a 40 mil on just to make sure that this level runs across flat. What we'll do now is we'll get the fern chips that we've cut, 30 mil to nothing on top of that, which means we've got a fall this way and we've got a fall this way. So it'll go lovely around the lantern, all around the lantern, the outlet's over there.
piece of ply we can put on for now because we got to leave that hole open because of the boiler flue. At the moment, it's planned in for next week, but we don't know whether that's going to happen or not because of getting the boiler in stock. But we shall see. But Adam's doing all the block work inside all the joists. Because remember, we blocked all the, uh, or sorry, we covered all the ends of the joists up, and that's why we do it now because all the compo and everything around it. Next job now, make all the stud work. Call it a little bit of stud work, a dwarf wall, whatever you want to call it, all the way around. Work, work my height out make it up on the saw, bring it up as individual um, dwarf walls and screw them all together. So the height of my little dwarf wall, 370 mil, that's what it's gotta be. So all I do now rather than uh, working all your maths out which of course you can do it's easy enough I'll get my timber because these timbers can always change widths if you mark 370 now like that on the, this this face or this face to which you're working for 370 and then if you then look at this side that then is telling me that the overhang I've got left is 277 so that tells me then, because that end of tape from there to there is 370, and that bit from there to there is 277, that is the piece that's got to go in between there when I open these up to give me my full height. exactly the same size very simply there's always holes in here that's to put sacrificial fences and things on or in this instance i screwed a block i set did my first block there it's my right measurement when i cut it down put a block up against it put a screw in the back put it against there just don't slam it against it. just be gentle and that's it just keep going easy work of it so you would have seen in the uh, earlier videos the um what we've got with regarding the the boundary wall that we've got to sort out. So what Adam's come up with today, he's come up with using the ivy bush. It's that dense, he can actually stand on it. So he's precariously now bricking. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what else to say about that, if I'm honest. nearly it then the battery's about to go on my phone so i'll do this one today done these two two end ones done the uh one of the main long ones got one more to make and we'll video installing them tomorrow good morning on youtube last day of the week it looks a pleasant enough day at the moment four or five degrees there's a bit of rain in the air but we can still see what we're going to get done i'll try and get some footage today if i can of uh, adam's um, levitation over the, the bush to do the brickwork around the corner. I can't really film it very well around here. There's someone come around today to get the last bit of information needed to get the glass roof measured on there. And we can finish the brickwork across the front here. Adam's put the DPC over the lintels there to form a bit of a cavity tray over this corner. We're going to get some of the uh, tape today, tape all the corner up.
the party wall brickworks going in now. Adam is now levitating over the conservatory roof now to do that bit. That will come up now, that brick there is actually finished height. So we're about five course above deck. But obviously on top of there we've got 120 mil insulation. Then the ply on top of there as well. So we've got the uh, upstands all on now and they're going to go around and measure all the all the plywood which is going to be at an angle rather than straight peak because obviously the slope of the roof it's all on and screwed all checked for square which i'm happy with adam's down the side doing his levitation over the uh the hedge the ivy hedge again to do his uh do his brickwork cracking on with that got the friday fair haven't we yeah we have so yeah, we just crack on now. I'll uh, cut this ply and I'll stick a bit of footage on. So we're at the end of the day now, end of the week, final walk round now, just had a good tidy up. That's still on there, just uh, finishing off his last half a bucket of compo on that, uh, that gable. All this is on ready for us now. Lantern's all structured, choice hanger's done, all bolted with the turbo bolts. I'll just uh, drop up the top and have a look once the gets down. Showing the last shot of the week before we start again. So, Hello, there we are. <laughs> There's Ad. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> so, there he is. Done that brickwork. What a task that's been for him. I'm glad it wasn't me. Like I said, this is all done. Thank you ever so much for watching this week. Hope you enjoy this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Mick, Luke, want to say anything to anybody?